you guys about how food affects autoimmune disease. If you have autoimmune disease such as rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, Sjogren's syndrome, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, um, any of these sorts, autoimmunity, people have, have really, really thought over a long period of time that autoimmune disease just all of a sudden comes out of nowhere and slaps you in the face and you have autoimmune disease. And people think, oh, maybe it's genetic. Maybe just because my parents have it, I have it. Um, and it's kind of like, well, you know, too bad. And uh, people don't realize that uh, people with autoimmune disease have a significant factor, and that's food, and that's environment. And yes, genetics pay, play a role to it, but it does not mean that you're doomed. I just want to talk to you guys about all this. And so autoimmune disease, uh, for most autoimmune diseases, have to do with inflammation and have to do with the body's reaction towards uh, our own body cells and we're attacking our own body cells. That's what autoimmunity is. And so how, why does the body produce substances that attack our own cells? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make sense that we are, we are constantly producing these, these uh, antibodies and these antibodies are attacking what's normal, what's, what's supposed to be in us. For example, one of the most, co mo most common autoimmune diseases is Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is hypothyroidism, which causes most of hypothyroidism in the U.S. Why would our body attack our own thyroid? And another common disease is lupus. Well, in lupus, we have antibodies towards our, our, our DNA, our own DNA. So why is our body attacking our own DNA? So it's something called uh, anti-nuclear antibody. And, um, and rheumatoid arthritis, this antibody is attacking, uh, attacking different things in the, our body that uh, affect our joints. And in Sjogren's, we have antibodies attacking our glands that secrete um, tears and uh, saliva and these, these, these um, uh, uh, fluid-producing glands. It doesn't make any sense. And why is autoimmune disease on the rise? What is triggering, what are triggering people to have more and more autoimmune disease? And what I used to think when I was in training was that, well, autoimmune disease are just more uh, commonly diagnosed because they're more recognized. So scientifically speaking, uh, this should be on the rise. But there's a whole lot more to it than that, and that's food. Food is very different today than it was, you know, decades ago. Uh, food today uh, most food today has been through some sort of processing uh, between the farm and the, the grocery store, or a lot of it's synthetic, or a lot of it's uh, genetically modified, or uh, genetically hybridized. In the, uh, and when I'm, that what I'm really talking about is the wheat and gluten is genetically hybridized. So a lot of things that, that humans have been doing, humans have been uh, having the technology to modify these foods one way or another to process them. Um, a lot of times humans use chemicals and, uh, and humans use genetic modification and hybridization. And, uh, and we're not used to that. You know, for, in the process of natural selection, it takes tens of thousands of years uh, for somebody to develop, <laughs> to develop a resistance uh, so towards a specific substance. And so why is autoimmune disease on the rise? And here's some factors. When you, we eat food that's processed, uh, our body tends to recognize it less. That's, that's just one of the issues. And so uh, I'm going to use gluten, for example. And it is not all just about gluten, but I'm really going to use gluten, for example, because it's a really easy concept. Gluten, we know, uh, ever since 2015, is an inflammatory substance, not just for those people with celiac disease, but for everybody. And where did gluten come from? Well, gluten is a naturally occurring substance, but it doesn't exist in the high amounts it did, it does in wheat right now, um, back before the 1950s. In the 1950s, uh, we found a way to hybridize wheat, where uh, wheat produced uh, longer grains and shorter stalks, so there's less waste and there's more production of the actual wheat grain. Um, while it you know, resolved a lot of issues with famine and waste and, and everything at that time, um, gluten went from a very small amount to a gigantic amount, and our bodies aren't really used to that. And it's really not just the gluten, because the gluten itself may not be the issue, but it could be something called FODMAPs, and FODMAPs are basically sugar side chains that attach to gluten and wheat peptides that may be causing issue as well. 
which is what happens when you uh, genetically hybridize something. And so the other concept are pesticides. Well, pesticides are um, alter these peptides, uh, these chemical structures, and also stored in these weak molecules, and our bodies now are so exposed to pesticides. And so you, it's really a trifecta of things, and I'm just using wheat as a, as a very simple example, but this happens with, with a lot of different things, you know? And people, people go to the grocery store, you know, we see what's on the shelves, we get them, we assume that just because it's packaged and it's healthy, that means it's healthy for you. That's not necessarily true. And let, look, let's look at some other things, all right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna bash on Cheetos, for example, because, you know, Cheetos is not a naturally occurring substance. You know, it's, it's made by, I don't know what company makes it, maybe Nabisco or something like that. But, but uh, these are things that are, that are chemically made. Um, and there's a lot of MSG in them as well, monosodium glutamate. Um, so when, when we eat these highly inflammatory things, our bodies do not like it. Our bodies are not used to this. Humans did not evolve to, to recognize these substances, so our body produces antibodies thinking that these substances are foreign. And, well, they kind of are, <laughs> because, you know, a few thousand years ago, humans did not, were not exposed to these things. And when the body produces antibodies to these substances, it also produces antibodies towards our own body cells, because it's called something called molecular mimicry. The, the antibody that's made to attack these, um, these unrecognizable foods uh, sometimes can cross-react and attack our own body cells, like the thyroid, for example. And so, so this perpetuates uh, a, a cycle of autoimmunity. And autoimmunity um, just keeps going on and on. There's more and more, and more antibodies being produced. Uh, and, uh, and we find that, that people with certain genetic uh, makeup are more predisposed to form these autoantibodies. Um, just because we have the genes to be predisposed to make these antibodies doesn't mean that we necessarily have to. We just have to have uh, an event uh, an insult, if you will, to make these antibodies. And so, you know, one of the first things that we do in autoimmune disease is that we, we put people on not just a gluten-free diet, but a processed grains-free diet. Um, and uh, it's not as simple as just saying, hey, cut out the grains, you'll be okay. It's far more complicated than that. Uh, we want people to eat a high uh, vegetable and therefore high fiber diet as well. But that's one of the first things that we do. And lo and behold, people, a lot of people get ex um, extreme benefit. They get better um, just a very short time while taking away whether it's the gluten or the processed foods, the processed grains, anything like that. And so people uh, have autoimmune disease in different levels and for different amount of times. And when people have it for a very long time, they can react to more than just processed foods. They can react to what we think are normal foods um, because these normal foods uh, now uh, are, are, uh, are triggering different cascade of autoimmune events. So some people require a far more strict elimination diet program than others. And uh, we can actually t uh, look at these antibodies, uh, look at the type of autoimmunity that's in our blood by getting these blood test results. And so it's re there's really not a one-size-fits-all approach to this. It's really far more complex than most people think. And, you know, our environment has a, has a huge factor, too. We look at the, the pollution that's going on these days, right? Look at the mercury that's in the air, right? Look at the mercury that's in our food, right? that's in the fish. And um, mercury is becoming more and more of a problem because there's more pollutants in the air, and especially in the last couple of years, where the Great Lakes of Michigan is extremely affected by the, uh, the, the brown cloud that's shifted from the Chin Chinese coast all the way over to the Californian coast, and now it concentrates in the Great Lakes, in Great Lakes of Michigan. And uh, of course, we, we get a lot of uh, fish from that. And so um, mercury is another example of an, a heavy metal that can trigger autoimmune disease. It's not the only one that can trigger autoimmune disease, but it's a popular one because it's a really common issue. And when mercury gets in our system, and mercury is not supposed to be high in our system, when mercury gets in our system, uh, our body really hates it. It develops all sorts of antibodies towards it, and these antibodies attack uh, everything in our body. And that's how a lot of autoimmune disease uh, progress and develop as well. So environment is a huge factor. And in fact, um, 
if you live in major cities, uh, the closer you are towards a major highway, the more likely you are to actually develop autoimmune disease sometime in your life. So that's something to think about because I kind of live near a, uh, a major highway myself. And so, you know, it's, uh, it's, not an easy, it's not an easy thing to go through and live with autoimmune disease. It's not an easy thing to get rid of autoimmune disease. Um, most of the time we can't get rid of autoimmune disease, but we can actually try to control the symptoms uh, quite a bit with the dietary changes, uh, being cautious of the environment, and uh, being cautious of, of, of the people that are around you and the exposures that are around you. Uh, but we can only do so much because we do live in a toxic environment most of the time. But people with autoimmune disease get thrown all sorts of drugs. And one of the first drugs that people get on are steroids or prednisone or something like that. Um, the problem with that is that while well, prednisone and these steroids suppress our immune response. But our immune response is not the problem. The problem was the in original insult. The original insult is whether it's uh, mercury and whether it's um, is, uh, processed foods or all of the above. That's something that we really have to focus and target onto. Otherwise, people are just subjected to all these medications. And, for, and be, even beyond prednisone and, and these um, other steroids, you have other medications that can cost $25,000 a month. And these, these are what we call targeted immunomodulators. And they target uh, specific immune cells to downregulate and, and uh, to have a decreased response to them. Well, the problem is our body needs some of those cells to have a normal immune system. And so if people uh, have been on stuff like Remicade, for example, and uh, they're, they're getting the treatments, um, they know that hey, the doctors say, hey, if you get sick, we can't, we can't do your treatment this week because um, it decreases your immune system. And so I think we're like trying to catch up. Medicine is trying to catch up with symptomology, but really we need to focus on the, on the origin, on what is the root cause. What is the root cause of autoimmune disease? And so, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people are, uh, are, are on these medications, but they're really not taught that, hey, there's things, there are things in the environment, there are things that you put in your mouth that is far more important than you might think. And so I really uh, challenge you guys to uh, have, a, have a complete understanding of how food and how the environment and how our genetics uh, affect autoimmune disease. But here's some tips. Here are some tips that uh, if you do have autoimmune disease that uh, I would like for you to try, okay? And I would like for you to try an elimination diet. So what is an elimination diet? Um, if you are in Houston or technically anywhere, um, you can come see us and we can give you a very specific uh, guide based on your blood work. But here's some general guidelines uh, to start today. And guideline number one. Uh, cut out gluten and processed grains because if you do that, um, you you decrease a lot of the uh, or, uh, the organic phosphates, the pesticide chemicals that come in. You also um, decrease the amount of gluten that come in. Uh, number two, just get rid of all processed foods. The more processed the food is, the more likely it's been processed to a point where your body has a hard time recognizing it and you develop autoimmune reaction to it. Number three, if you are on, on, on an acid suppressor, if you are on like Tums or Nexium or Protonix, anything like that, I highly advise you to try to get off the medication with your physician's help um, because um, these decrease stomach acid and stomach acid required to break down these foods and if you're already suppressing uh, the stomach acid and you have foreign foods coming into your body, your body's not gonna be very happy. In fact, these medications, the acid suppressors are the ones that are most likely to cause you to have a food allergy. All right. uh, number four, uh, make sure to test your drinking water. Uh, sometimes if you live in an old house, um, your drinking water can have some heavy metals and other, uh, uh, other uh, chemicals in it that you're not aware of. And number five, number five is the most important one. Keep a food lock. Actually look at the food lock, look at where you're eating and, uh, and, and then pick out uh, which ones you can do without in terms of processed foods, uh, in terms of um, genetically modified grains, which most grains are, and in terms of sugars. So sugars are highly important as well because most people, uh, sugars that are concentrated are not really naturally occurring either. Um, it, we humans have concentrated in the form, especially if it's high fructose corn syrup is not the best. 
And I'm going to add number six in there, are sugar substitutes, uh, like uh, saccharin or sucralose and stuff like that. Sugar substitutes are very bad for autoimmune disease, very, very bad, because sugar substitutes increase a type of bacteria in our body called Formicides in our gut. And Formicides, while it's naturally occurring in our gut, uh, it's supposed to be there, it increases dramatically compared to something called Bacteroides, uh, which is another species in our gut. When Formicides dramatically increases and Bacteroides species come down, it predisposes people to significant inflammation in the gut, ADHD, ADD, anxiety, depression, rashes, you name it. Uh, it also predisposes people to obesity. So a lot of formicities in the gut is related to people having different nutrient extractions to the carbohydrates that they eat. And so that's why sugar substitutes are horrible. Diet Coke is horrible. Diet Pepsi is horrible. Diet anything is horrible. Uh, Sugar-free diabetic candy is horrible because it increases that formicities. That's why sugar substitutes have been shown to also progress people towards type 2 diabetes just as much as normal sugar has. And so, get rid of the diet drinks and the diet stuff, all right? Thank you guys so much for listening. If you want to be evaluated for your autoimmune disease, come to the Texas Center for Lifestyle Medicine. Uh, go on the website that I post in the description. Um, you gotta do it from your desktop or a laptop. You can't do it from your phone right now. We have some errors with that. Um, but if you do, register yourself and we can evaluate your autoimmune disease all the way from your blood to your mouth to your gut to everything like that to your, from, to your skin and so that we can give you a regimen. We can give you a regimen to decrease your symptoms and hopefully maybe even get you off some of the medicines if you are on medicines. We're going to try our best. I guarantee you that. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.